for me it is a, a, a an obsession or a love affair. <laughs> not that I play in a band uh, because I want I have an educational program that I want to uh, teach everybody about music history I, I do it because I love this kind of music I love these old records and I, I want to make music like that I want to make records like that and so here I am <laughs> Where I grew up, it was uh, in the country, uh, in the north, uh, and there was no, um, you know, uh, modern music. It, the rock and roll was all, you know, like kind of Led Zeppelin, and it was, you know, kind of the 60s and 70s stuff, and, uh, you know, it was... Uh, that that was a big influence on me because uh, I didn't like that. I thought it, rock and roll was terrible, and it would, when I f discovered that there was some, something else, you know, that what I when I found out what rock and roll really was, that was uh, a good thing for me, for me and very exciting. So. <laughs> Um, I, you know, honestly, rockabilly is very, very closely related to the blues. It's, it's just, as you put it, it's a, it's a part of a continuum of American music and, uh, you know, I guess music in general. Um, but, uh, you know, it's very close to the American roots music and, and uh, you know, rockabilly was really kind of white people just trying to play the blues. And uh, that's what they sort of came up with, this sort of hopped up uh, country music influence blues. Um, and it's got a lot of things in common with blues, like small bands. Uh, electric guitars, um, emotional uh, singing. It's got sort of country influences and like uh, southern influences, and um, you know it just depended on who was doing it. And and uh, it sort of rockabilly sort of sprang up at a certain really particular time in American history, um, whereas blues sort of maybe took a longer time to cook. Um, but uh, you know some of the early rockabillies were very very closely involved with blues and Sun Records, which sort of hatched the sound. Uh, was primarily a blues label. Sam Phillips, the uh, owner, would pretty much only recorded blues artists, black artists in the South and Memphis. You know, the, as an American, the blues is a very heavy thing, you know, uh, because of the it ties to, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, race and, and our culture. And, um, you know, it's something which I am still learning about and still understanding. You know, and I think uh, certain. Uh, yeah, as I get older, uh, I can understand a little bit more. But I, you know, have a ways to go. The interesting about rockabilly when it happened was uh, just that it was a hybrid. It was a combination no one had really ever heard before. So um, it, it just was, you know, uh, that and the fact that Elvis Presley was, you know, beautiful looking, great dancer, great singer, charismatic on stage. So you know, the combination of things made it happen. Um, but I, I'm sorry to make such a long answer, but the, uh, the, uh, your point about it being a continuum of music is, is a good one. I think, uh, you know, John and I are not trying to do, um, we're not trying to like sort of retread something that's happened once and couldn't possibly happen again. But uh, we're, we're drawing on it, some of the same influences, I think, that um, um, our, you know, forefathers and music did. And uh, I, that's, what we're, that's what we're trying to do. And, and uh, hopefully it comes out that way.
I'm not cl uh, close to the present or the future. You know, I, I take a lot from, you know, uh, the past, but I also take a lot uh, from my contemporaries, and I also take a lot from, you know, my, my imagination, you know, and uh, whatever's out there. So, uh, no, I'm not like a, a purist. Uh, I, uh, you know, I'm, uh, like to, I, I like to think that uh, my mind is open. <laughs> It can have influences, but it's really got to be your own thing. You have to make it your own, otherwise it just kind of feels like, you know, copying or, or fandom or something, you know. And uh, I think um, one thing John has really certainly proved he can do is um, digest influences and make them 100% himself, you know. So when we work together, we try, we make sure that's kind of the test, you know. We see like when we died, when we when we come up with the song, we we sort of like test it for like, oh, does this feel like it's us? Does it feel right? Does it work musically? And uh, you know, but uh, yeah. And so because we're living in the moment and we're around in the year 2006, you know, this is of course it sounds somewhat modern, but uh, you know. I personally, uh, I'm kind of a, you know, I have old-fashioned equipment and old guitars and old amps and stuff. Um, so, and, I've, and mostly it comes down to our record collections. You know, we have hundreds and hundreds of old records that John and I just bury ourselves in. So, uh, I think you know, it just ends up coming out that way. Electricity is nice, yeah, but you don't need it. I would love to do that. I mean, we could we do it with heavy trash sometimes. We don't, you know, because it's much more of an acoustic band, you know, and you can do that. And to it, it's it's a lot. Uh, I I really enjoy it because it's nice to be able to sing without a, a lot of noise. You know, it's a nice. Break. <laughs> Most of the time what we'll do is we just, uh, we, we go and sort of play, we keep the tape recorder running, and we play and just sort of make stuff up, um, keep it nonverbal. We don't, gen like, we'll, we'll, we'll sort of not even speak to each other for maybe two or three hours. We just kind of play, and both of us will sing. Uh, mostly John will sing, kind of play around with different phrases and stuff. And uh, anything, you know, nothing is not admissible. So everything goes on the tape, and everything that just tumbles out of the brain is potential for... Uh, for uh, you know, uh, editing down to something, and then we go back a couple of days later and we say like, oh, that was kind of cool, you know, and then we we see if that suggests something else, and then you know work on it some more, and uh, you know it's it's um there's a lot of a uh, lot of generated material for how much actually makes it onto the record, you know. <laughs> <laughs> John's band, The Blues Explosion, uh, and Speedball Baby would often tour together. And uh, we met backstage, you know, we would hang around backstage and play, writing songs and just messing around, playing music, and we discovered we had a lot of interests, musical interests in common. So uh, we, um, uh, we both had a break, a kind of a break, you know, we had a period of downtime. The Blues Explosion wasn't too busy, and Speedball Baby had just got off tour, 
and uh, John and I started uh, hanging around writing some songs and just having fun and uh, it was just really really great and very enjoyable and uh, so uh, we kept it up and then you know didn't really think too much about uh, making it serious until we had a whole album's worth and we're like oh I guess we have an album so uh, we we put it out with Yep Rock in uh, the United States and um, an al a label called Crunchy Frog in Europe and it's just been going great we've been touring around and uh, it's very fun John's a fantastic performer and uh, it's just a real pleasure to, to play with him and these Scandinavian guys have been playing with in Europe. Well, we made the record just pretty much me and Matt, just the two of us, and then, uh, you know, we had some help in the studio, friends would come in, but there was no band, and then when we were made the record, it was all done, then we started to get offers to perform, and so we, the first shows we did were with a Canadian band called the Sadies, who are from Ontario, Toronto, Ontario, and we did some shows with them, and that went very well. And then when we came to Europe, we played with our friends from Crunchy Frog, who are, who are there, um, yeah, from uh, Denmark. And that also goes very well. And that's who we'll be performing with tonight. Heavy trash day. It was our first Tuesday of every month. It was the day you have to put the refrigerators and the old stoves and the broken, the big things for them to haul away. One one month, one day a month was heavy trash day, like old dur lourd. So um, they, uh, my father said, hey, you should call your band Heavy Trash. And uh, when I was 11, I wasn't into listening to my father saying, oh no no no. Um, but uh, of course now it made a lot more sense, and you know, and he was very pleased that we used that name. <laughs> Take all the money to love.